Yo, yo, hold up a second here. Before you quickly judge this video, because it's 40 minutes, I know, it's super long. If you're not interested in electricity or in my modular electrical system in Rust, this video is gonna be nothing for you. So I recommend to just skip it. Now, the main reason this video turned out to be 40 minutes long is because I'm not just going over the basics of how electricity works in Rust, but I'm also applying it onto a modular system that anyone can use in any base, in any size, and can be upgraded to anything. Enjoy the video, and I hope there's something you can learn. Yo, what's up? My name is Sven, and today we're going to talk about something new. The very basics of electricity in Rust. So the reason I'm starting this series is basically because a lot of you have been asking how I manage my electricity for big builds. And also, I feel like there isn't really any direct explanation videos out there that really show you how to make a electricity system that's also scalable and upgradable along the way. I know a lot of you probably already know how to connect a simple battery or windmill to a light and use a switch to turn it on but there's a lot more about it there's a lot more and simple things to know and tricks that i want to share with you guys so you know the very basics about electricity knowing electricity in rust is actually insanely overpowered right now if you know what you're doing you can set up an insane amount of electrical stuff that can really help you defend your base for example anyways let's not go too far into that yet not in this video in this video i'm gonna show you guys the very basics and how to set up a system that you can later on upgrade and that you can keep upgrading along the way and along the course of your wipe quick note here this video will be part of a series and so this video will be the basis and the fundament for future electricity videos on my channel. Now without further ado, let's jump straight into the video. So I do plan on making this video as short and easy to understand as possible. Although I will be linking useful timestamps in the description of this video in case you miss something. I would really recommend to check that out so you can rewatch a particular point. I'm gonna do my best to explain to you the very basics of electricity and rust. Before we jump into any of that, there's a couple of things you should know. The very most basic ground rule about electricity is as following. There is always an input, there is an output. We have have electrical components and we have electrical items now I will show on screen right now which item is in what category so you can easily understand what it really does input speaks for itself it's basically any type of thing that can generate electricity then we have storage which are devices that can hold power aka batteries there's also three of them then we have the components and there's three kind of like zones here we have the simple, we have the medium, and the optional components. Components relay electricity. They function as something, although they're not an end item. What I mean with this is components you mostly need to get the end item or the end product that you want to power working. And then in the last zone, we have the electrical items. And these are the items that you can power using your electricity system. So, to sum this all up. I like to see the whole system in two ways, where we use the storage, aka the batteries, as the split, as the border. The first part is the easiest, and that is about how you power your batteries. Then we have the split, which is the batteries. And then we have the second part, which is the part about what you're going to do with the power, aka your actual electrical system. Now this can be super simple as turning on some lights, or this can be very advanced. In this video, I'm gonna show you how we're gonna make this basic system, this fundament and this expendable system for basically anything else you ever want in your base. So that's it for the explanation. I would recommend to re-watch this video if you don't understand a particular thing. I tried to make this as easy and simple for you all as possible, although there is a little line because we are going to be using and making a fundamental system that will be a fundament and a basis for every other electrical video on my channel. Point here is that if you know how that system works, you're basically set. 
you can upgrade it you can add anything you want and you can basically unlimitedly add more and more to it the downside only is that it might be a little bit confusing if you don't know anything about this in the start i can tell you this it's gonna be extremely rewardable knowing these things i would also like to explain that i'm making this video based on the fact that you're gonna be playing a vanilla wipe so i'm gonna be explaining everything in a particular order that's natural for a wipe with that said, let's talk about the batteries, aka the split in our system and the main core of every system first. Now there's three type of batteries in Rust and the only difference they have is the amount of storage they have and the amount of power they can send out. Simply said, the small battery can store less power and can also output less power, the medium battery goes in the same order and the large battery is the best one it can store the most power and it can push out the most power from this point i would really recommend to you the website rustlabs.com it's a rust wiki page where you can see all the information about particular items now it's very important to kind of estimate what you want to do if you're a solo or a duo you might not want to make a modular system that you will upgrade along the way. As a solo or duo, you're probably gonna be already satisfied with some basic electrical system. And in that case, I would recommend to check up information about the small and medium battery. In my case, I'm gonna go out from the fact that you're playing as a kind of bigger group. So we're always going to be using the large battery. Considering the fact that you're gonna be watching this video and you're gonna be wanting to make some kind of bigger electrical system than just having a few lights, it's basically already pointless to use either a small or a medium battery. They're basically not worth it. Are they entirely useless? I wouldn't say so. There's one thing you could do with them, but I'm not gonna be featuring that in this video. So for now, let's focus on the large battery. I would just like to say here that you could always make the same system that I'm about to show for medium or small batteries. You just have to change the amounts depending on the battery you're working with. So in our case, let's start with one large battery and as soon as you have this battery in the wipe, just place it down somewhere in your base. Remember, this will be the basis of everything. Now there's two parts of the video left. Part one is how we're going to power this battery and more and part two is how or what we're gonna use. Okay, what items are we gonna power with the power from the battery? All right, so let's talk about power input. How are we going to power the electricity for the battery that you just placed? Also here, we have three items to work with. We have the solar panel, we have the windmill and we have the generator. Now the generator runs on low grade and it's really good for doing a raid or as a backup, but it's not a main power source because it uses low grade and you're gonna run out of that eventually. So we're just gonna skip the generator for the sake of this video. Don't worry, I will be covering one day how to make a backup system using generators, but for now, we're not gonna use it. But that makes basically two power inputs devices left. We have the solar panel, which generates 20 electricity when the sun is shining on it, of course. And we have the windmill. Now there is some advanced details about these items in what way you should face the solar panel and the windmill, how they work optimally the best and how they catch the most power. But for now, I would say for the windmill, place it as high as you can, build a little tower or something as you can in the air. And for the solar panel, place it facing north. Now that's basically it for the basics. We'll be featuring more advanced information about these items in a future video. So let's talk about the wire tool. The wire tool is the basic tool that you need to connect electrical components and items with each other. You can craft it using five high qual and a workbench level one or higher. Now this wire tool works as a normal item like a hammer or a weapon basically. You can hold it in your hand and it allows you to place and connect cables. Now there's two things you should know about this item. One is that when you hold it in your hand, you can usually see information about the electrical thing you're currently watching. As I can see now, the information about the large rechargeable battery. The other thing it can do is next to connecting cables using these dots and lay power lines. Whenever you want to cancel this, you just right click, goes away. If there's already a cable connected to something that you want to use, be careful because it can be a lot of time to connect cables. You hold right click and as you can see I'm spamming it now, but if I hold it, 
the cable will disappear and i can then redo the cable by left clicking and connecting it into the output of the solar panel so now just to double check that the battery is actually charging as you can see it's charging it's going up to 237 238 now of course the battery won't charge when the sun is under or when the solar panel isn't receiving any power right now it's facing uh, or it's receiving 20 power but it could also be lower depending on the sun since the battery and the output is not connected to anything the battery is not outputting anything right now so that means that even if the sun goes under the battery will just stop charging but it won't lose any power either it will hold its power the next day it will charge more it will charge more and more and more and that's what you want especially on a vanilla wipe you want to make sure this battery has kind of like a buffer so next to having a device that can store your power aka battery and having a device that can charge your battery there's a few components you're gonna need on the input side of the electricity system or that is a root combiner and an electrical branch and you're gonna need that and you're gonna need this one so these are basically on the input side of things the two most important if not pretty much the only two things you're gonna need at, at least in this video so at this point you're hopefully gonna have more than one solar panel and more than one windmill or if a few solar panels and one windmill in my case let's just say i found a windmill during a wipe Make sure that you place this thing somewhere you want it for sure, because you're not gonna be able to pick it up. This is not the optimal placement. You wanna build a tower, because the higher you build it, the more wind it will catch. Right now it's catching some wind, and as you can see, it's outputting 100 power. But when we connect this, when we try to connect this to the battery, as you can see, it's not allowing me, because there's only one input into the battery. And that's what I'm gonna show you guys now. How can you connect as many input things as you want into the battery? So for that, we're gonna need our friend the root combiner you can see here so how does this thing work you can see we place it down just to try this one you can pick up so no worries you can see there's a root power one there's a root power two and there's a root combined power out now as it says in the word in the title of the device it's a root combiner it can combine two things and basically put them into one string of power so how does that work let's just put it put one right here let's remove the power by right clicking from the solar panel and let's connect the solar panel in one of the root powers and the windmill in the other root power. So as you can see now, with having the wire tool out to get our information, you can see that the combined power out right now is 132. That's the electricity amount. This amount right here is very important to know because for every electrical item that we want to power in the whole end of the system, it's going to require a certain amount of electricity. For example, turrets need 10 electricity. So technically, without all the components you need, you could say you could power about 12 turrets. So let's just say they use up 120 power, you will have 11 left for the electrical components. Anyway, let's not get into that yet. Let's get into the basics first also something you might notice is that the windmill in this case is outputting 111 power yet here it's saying 131 and i'm not sure why but it's kind of like a glitch but it's showing both things together even on the power in you can see it's showing 130 right now on each 130 changes because the windmill sometimes goes a lot faster than other times so now you may connect the combined power out from the root combiner into your battery as you can see, power is going in 128 at the moment. And you can see that the battery is charging a lot faster than it was with just the solar panel. And this is what you want. This is kind of the basics here. So now in this point in the wipe, you might have another windmill and another solar panel. So let's just go ahead and place another windmill. And let's just go ahead and place like one, two, three four more solar panels now this is where your upgradable system comes in place this is where you're gonna have to remove power out and this is where you're gonna have to build kind of like a, a hierarchy of root combiners so let's just simplify this all up by picking everything up so it's completely clean let's just say you have a main wall right here this is the main root combiner this root combiner is what's gonna put power into the battery so we can already go ahead and connect that so you can see there's no power going out so now we're gonna build a hierarchy so one two and then under this one we're gonna put two two and if you have a lot of high and a lot of electrical things just gonna put another two under this one it's not equally centered sorry about that so what you can do now is connect these two here connect these two here connect these two down there this is basically all going into one thing the battery in this case and we have two four eight sixteen places that we can put power in so we can start by putting one in windmill we can connect another solar panel to the next one in line 
can connect another solar panel and the last one so you can see there's a lot of space left to connect a lot more items if you get them i would say do it why not you can never have enough power some will, might break from people shooting them out or raids or raid defenses or whatever and in case you actually do end up connecting all of these and you're at the last one and you realize that there's not enough power you could always just build another hierarchy like that one and that one in the last slot you had and expand it like that. As far as I know, it doesn't matter how far you build this out. And it doesn't matter if it's equally divided. You can have a second hierarchy here again. With that one and that one. Basically, you can expand this as much and multiply it as much as you want. So now back to the battery. The battery right now is receiving 282 power, which is a lot. That's why it's charging so fast. Now, the battery can always receive as much power as you'd want. So, although that the battery can receive as much power as, we, as you would want, as you can, it can only always ever output a 100. And that is the kind of signature or specification of this battery. This is the biggest one there is. So, outputting a 100 is what you can output maximum using a battery. If you want to output 200 power or 300, you're basically going to need more batteries. And that's why the next explanation comes in so to connect more or to have more batteries charging using the same main input power system we're gonna need another item the electrical branch electrical branches are easier to put on walls so i would recommend that it's gonna be building a branch wall here since we have more batteries i'm gonna place four now these can be placed a lot better i'm just placing them like this for now now you would say yeah okay so how are you gonna charge all four using all that because you only have one here to work with so there's two ways you can do this the first way is the more easy your way by splitting this all up by saying okay this root combiner here is gonna go to the first battery and everything that's under there is gonna charge the first one the second one to the second battery etc that works although there's two reasons why i don't like that system one reason is that it's uncontrolled really some batteries might receive a lot more power than others the other reason is that batteries although they output 100 power when they're outputting 100 power to keep them from discharging from losing power they always should receive more than 100 power if they receive 101 that's fine at least they won't discharge you're gonna be playing the game on a live server so when the server restarts there's actually glitches and it might lose and use a lot more power or something and that is where the buffer comes in that's where you want to have this battery already charging before you start connecting any output to it same goes for the other four so when we're connecting this final system to be charging all four batteries at once it's very important that they all be charging for a little while so just to make sure that we can and have enough power to charge all four batteries Technically, they all output 100 electricity, or they're going to. That means that they need to at least receive 400 power. Right now, we are at 341. And this number is going to change a lot. Every windmill, in my experience, charges about 130 electricity. So that's basically enough for one battery. If you put one windmill per battery, you should be fine. I use the solar panels to, to like buff up to, to make the batteries get a lot more power than just in case. But technically, you should need another two windmills to have enough power. So let's just go ahead and... Get Get that done quick and again the windmills can be connected to our modular system and if you have eight windmills or 10 or 20 just all connect them to the same system all right so there we go as you can check here we are we are working right now with 629 power now all the all the uh, people that are very specific about this why would you use 500 power and while well, the the battery is only gonna output you 400 and that's just like i said because of all the server restarts and glitches there are with it i just want to make sure there's a buffer this is the easy way easiest way to understand if you notice that one of your batteries is not charging enough one thing that you can always do is connect more input more solar panels for windmills so at this point we want to charge all four batteries and that's why we're going to need the electrical branch so for each battery i'm going to be placing one electrical branch so one here one here one here and one here now, it's a bit important for me to explain you what does the branch do. And as you can see, the branch also has two ways out and one way in. And it basically works exactly the same as a root combiner. Although the difference is that with a wire to equipped, you can press E on the branch and you can select an amount to branch off. What it really does is, let's just say you put 50 here. It means that when the branch is receiving power and it's receiving more than 50, it will branch out 50 power. Now, the prioritization works a bit weird here, or it works kind of logical, actually. How it works is, let's say it receives... 100 power and the branch is set on 50 that means that since the branch is using one power it will branch out 50 so then we have 49 power out on the other side if you set this on 10 um, it will it will always branch out exactly 10 the branch will use one so there will be 88 power left uh, 89 sorry for the power out so in practical use let's just show you guys how that works we are going to be putting power out from the root combiner into our first branch it's right here there you, go. you can see it's receiving 669 power so now i cannot show you by 
by doing this. Although what I can do is put one right there and one right there. The reason I'm putting two is simply because I can see here 685, 10. So just to show you, set the branch and set it on 50. Right now we are receiving 696. There's going 50 out in that one. 696 minus 50, that's 646. Minus one, 645. As you can see, it's receiving 645. So it's whatever you say the branch has to branch off, it will always branch that exact amount off and the rest will go to the next one. Now this branch, it's extremely, extremely important to understand how this works. This is the root of both the input side of things, but also later the output side of things. And especially for the output side, it's very important. So let's connect our first battery. And what we do is we want to branch out power from our main, sp main strip. That's why we're using the branch into the battery. Power in. Now right now it will be receiving 50 power. Is that enough to charge it? It is. Can receive anything to charge it. Although it's not going to be enough when we're doing an output. So this thing needs to receive at least over 100. There isn't really a safe spot in which amount you should use. But since we have 682 power to, to work with. Let's just say 600. I'm going to be branching out 150. AKA 50 power too much. You can see it's receiving 150. What do we do with the power out? That goes to the next branch. So the idea here is that whatever power it's receiving, it's branching off whatever amount we want into the first battery. And the next part is going into power out into the next branch. The next branch, we're going to set on 150 to branch out again. We're going to connect the branch out into the battery in. This battery is also going to receive 150 power and it's going to be charging. Then we go to the next branch. We do the same thing again. There we go. And... For the last one, branch out 150, set, charge. Since we have so much power to work with in our case, uh, since we have 647 power, this last branch is receiving what? 194, well, 150 is going into the battery. And as you can see, if you want to do the math, there's 40 power left to work with in this case. What do you do with that 40 power? That's something that comes in an, in a future video. Okay, so a quick break here. I understand if it's a bit confusing about what's going on. So in the website rustrition.io, I have made a layout of my electrical system. Now I will put a link to this in the description of the video. And you can basically see here what the electrical system is like in, in a, in a top-down layout kind of view. You can even see what's working with the amount of power, etc. It's actually a really, really good website to test out your electrical systems. If you're looking for the layout of my modular system, I will link that in the description of this video. Make sure to check that out. Also, a quick note here. I have split the same way we are splitting the system in the video. Also here in the layout. So here we have the power in section with all the input devices all the root combiners that are modular, you can connect more here, more wherever, as I explained in the video. Then we have the split with four batteries in this case, as we have four in the video. And then these go all to one main power source into the first, second, third and fourth branch. If you want to connect more uh, batteries, more power inputs or more electrical systems, you can just continue the way down the same way I continued all of them. So that's just a quick side note about this. Anyways, let's jump back into the video. For now, let's just say it's good you have some power left. Because as soon as the windmills or as soon as the sun goes under, all the solar panels won't be emitting power anymore. So averagely, the windmill will be 120, 120, 120, 120. Let's say average. So that means that in total, we'll have 480 power to work with. Now, if you do the math quick, we technically need 600 for this system. So what happens is the first 150 power goes into this one. That's fine. The next 150 goes into this one. That's fine. The next 150 goes into this one. That's fine. Then we're at 460. So in the night, we'll only have 30 power left going out of this one for the last battery. So what happens is since it branches off 150, it will branch always off until 150. So it will branch off 30 in that case. And this battery is going to show problems. So in our case scenario, if the batteries are charged well enough, it's fine. But what I like to do is sum it down since this is the first one in the row it will always since we are working with four windmills it will always receive 100 power so let's put this one on 110 as it doesn't need so much power let's put the next one on 120 and let's put the third one on 120 as well so what happens now is the total amount of power that the first batteries need is 110 plus 120 and 120 but so that is exactly 350 if it's night and all, all of them are going that means there is 110 power left averagely for the last battery to be powered which is more than 100 which means 
means that it won't drain even in the night and this is very important why because if one of the batteries has zero power it will cause a shortage in your system now in my system we will make it so that even if there's a shortage your main components depending on how you connect them of course are still going to be powered so don't worry about that although it's best to avoid this in any case just a quick pause here i hope you still understand what's going on if you don't feel free to always message me on discord or ask a comment in the questions i know this can be a lot and I know this is not really a basic video, although it's the basics of any expendable system that you want. And I can tell you right now, trust me, you're gonna want to know this and you're gonna want to apply this to any of your bases. So at this point, you would say um, all the batteries are charging. They should be charging the right amounts in the right order as well. And at this point, you would say, let's just make sure they get a buffer. Let's let's get them charging for a bit. As you can see this one has been charging for a lot more than these. So this one has already a lot more power. Just to be safe, again, we want to make sure they all have a buffer before we start doing anything with their output. So one thing I do want to show you here is that if you notice that your battery is losing power instead of gaining. It's very important to look back at the branches and to set the right amounts. Now, let's just say you don't have a lot of power with this one and you want it to, to have to receive 400. Since there is only 175 power left, it will always only output whatever it has left. So for this one to get more power, you need to decrease these. So let's just say 100 here, 100 here, 100 here. That should give us 50 more. Let's see here, 217, see? So I hope you understand this. I don't really know how else to explain that. but since these are all kind of branching out power the last one is just branching off whatever power it has left until it reaches the amount you put the next will be power out but power out is zero right now although it doesn't even show that show you it's zero because it doesn't have enough power to even branch everything off first that's how the prioritization works sorry if it's a bit confusing i hope you guys understand this i'm just gonna go ahead and put the original uh, values back so that was 150 on this one so checking the charge of your batteries should be a prioritization and it should be the same prioritization as that you're filling up your external TCs. It's important you check the power on them and you make sure all of them are being treated well, like he said. And you want to make sure that they all have power left and that they're all charging. All right, so that's it for power input, the batteries, aka the core, the split. Now we're going to talk about the power output. And that is basically using the power to your advantage to strengthen your base and to do whatever the hell you want to do with your power. The first thing we want to do is since we're working with multiple batteries, you want to decide what and how you want your system. Do you want each battery to power each its own things? Or do you want to connect each battery to each other and have one main system that powers everything? This main system that powers everything is what we are going to be using. If you want, you can literally just connect this power out to the switch and then connect your electrical system. Although in this case, you're only going to have 100 power to work with, as each battery can always only output 100. In our case, since we want to be connecting everything together, we're going to be once again using root combiners. And since we have four batteries, we could do it with three. But this is our hierarchy. Sorry if I say that word wrong, by the way. And now we're going to connect the power out of every battery into one part of the root combiner. And as you can see... 400 and that is because 100 100 100 100 power to work with now one thing you'll notice at the at the batteries that they won't be charging as fast as you can anymore and that's also because they're outputting now two power for that two root combiners they're connected to but that's also uh, what you also will notice is that it will say how much charge is left in each one of them and you want to make sure that number is kind of step relatively high and the reason this one is right now not that high is Right now, we're not actually getting so much power. We're only getting 298 power. So we're only getting enough power to basically charge the first three batteries. And this one, not even entirely, as you can see, will be on 55. So what happens is this one will start draining because it's not receiving any power. This one will start to drain as well because it's receiving... Actually, it won't drain because it's only outputting two power and it's getting in 45. And these two should still be fine. 120, 110. So in this case... It's because there's not a lot of wind and the sun is about to go under. So we're kind of having a 
that's kind of the reason why you want a buffer. I can tell you right now, the chance that there's not enough wind with all these windmills and stuff, you should be fine with exactly this amount. And this will happen. Although that's why you want the buffer and the buffer will always be overcompensated. So in the end, all four batteries will be fully charged anyways. Right now, it's just that they're not fully charged yet. So just ignore in the back what's happening there. That's all fine. But again, it's very important that you keep under control what that you are aware of your batteries powering. In the worst case scenario, if this battery underperforms, what you could do is just completely disconnect it from the whole system temporarily or just remove the power out. That way it won't mess up your system. So how, how the mess up could work is basically in, in a simple way is that there's four batteries, 100, 100, 100, and 100. All right, so let's go back to that picture that I posted about the main component. We have the root combiner and we have the electrical branch and we have just used all of those. Now at this point, we're not gonna need root combiners anymore at all. So you can just get rid of them or in my case, I can get rid of them. Don't throw them away. You might always need them later. <laughs> so uh, the last item on the simple main components list is the switch. And the switch is basically a super simple item that can say, I allow power to go through. It uses one power, the rest will go through. Now, there's two ways you can do this. You could say, ah, let's place a switch here and connect the power there. But then that switch will turn on and off whatever you have connected after. And we want to have a modular system with multiple power ends, multiple batteries, and a lot of power all going down into one thing. Thing, but we want to make sure that we can turn each and every system on and off separately So just to simplify this up we're gonna have system one on the right system two on the left then you have the problem with 400 power here which one do i put it in we have two things can i use a root combiner no that's only for input not for power going out so what do you use here and in this case we're going to be using a branch again so you could technically use one branch branch it out into that switch and then the power out into the other but in my case we're going to be using two branches just to simplify and just to explain the whole thing here then we're going to connect the power into the first switch branch out into the switch power out of the branch let's just do it a bit nice at least into the next one and branch out into the switch again the branch amounts here are always set on two so what you'll see is when they are when the switches are both on they will emit one power that's because they use one power but there's one power to work with if we want to give more power to that switch or for whatever we need we just increase this number 200 199 will be the output whatever number you do so it's nice to have a branch under each switch to simplify everything up you can also put a sign next to this and say okay what for what system is this in my case we're simply going going to be powering lights and i'm simply going to explain you the um, needs for the branches so on system one we're gonna have one light and i'm actually gonna remove this hold on and on system two we're gonna have three lights i will be featuring each and every electrical item individually in future videos but for now we're gonna use lights and lights are simple items they have a power in and a pass through they only need to receive one power to be lighted pass through passes on the next the next power but it uses one just like the switch so connecting the lights to the switch and it's gonna turn on straight away turn off the switch light turns off for the next system we're gonna turn off the switch for now so the lights don't instantly turn on and we're gonna connect all three lights how do you want to uh, prioritize these lights it's kind of important that you do it from like bottom to top i would say in your base why why not top to bottom that's because if you're doing heli and there is a light that's kind of on the top and that's where you start if the heli breaks that lamp and that's very likely to happen if if it's too close to your shooting floor it will turn off the, the lights in the rest of your base as the pass through is missing so you want to start at the top and work your way up towards your base so that if the lights on the top break it's only those that break and the pass through will remain for the bottom one now if i turn on the switch here you'll see that only one light will turn on and why is that because the switch is only outputting one power this is where the branch comes in and this is where power management becomes a lot more complicated but also a lot more a lot better and i, I give this the term power management because you want to use every single electricity power that you're getting out of those four batteries as efficient as you can because if you do so four batteries means you have 400 power to work with and that means that you can have if you do the calculations you can kind of estimate okay i want 10 turrets each turret uses 10 po 10 power that means that there will be 100 power needed for the turrets now each turret also 
need an electrical branch and I'll be featuring that in the next video. So that means for the turret you actually need exactly for 10 111 power for your system. So then you have 390 power left for the rest. So you can make a system with Samsite. You can make a system with lamps. You can make a system with sensors. You can make an alarm system. Whatever you like. But it's very important that you give each system only the amount of power you need in the hierarchy. So here we have a branch that's giving out 200 into a switch that's only powering one light. This thing uses one. The switch uses one. So technically the branch only needs to branch out to turn that on the light will turn on if i connect a third light or a second light actually pass through here light won't be on it needs one more power three set light will be on okay it's not on okay so there's actually something weird here but what you want to do in the end is just increase this number until the light turns on and you want to find the sweet spot so three turns off four turns on so don't make it five because if you make this five or ten or a hundred you're basically branching out a lot of power that's just going into a light and it doesn't need it and that's where the term power management comes in and that's the the root of every single system and every single system you're gonna see in my videos so we're branching out three no wait how much are we branching out four power so that means that minus the 400 there should be 395 left also um because this thing is using one so 395 left we're gonna branch out again into a switch so that switch is one two three four then we need five we actually need six. So you want to find the sweet spot again. There's something going on about lights that it adds one for some reason. Maybe I'm stupid, but anyways, you want to find the sweet spot. Six power out. That means that just putting a switch here to measure what is the out here that we have left. Right now we have 388 power left into the next system. And that's how you want to do each and every system. Maybe you want to have a fourth system there with each and every switch, with each and every uh, branch. So you can control this. The best way you can. And whatever you do out of here. Right now we're just powering lights. That's where I'm going to be focusing on for the next series. For the next videos. But for now at least I show you guys the basics. And the very basics of how to set up my modular electrical system. Alright guys that is it for this one. Now I hope you appreciate the way I explained to you guys my electrical system. And I say mine because there is a lot of ways you can do this. There's a lot of ways you can achieve the same results in electricity. Although this is what I use and this is what I can recommend and explain to you guys. Now I wouldn't consider myself as an extremely professional guy that knows this. Although I do know the basics and most importantly functionally I know exactly how it works. And that's what matters. The only thing that matters is that you can actually provide your group with 10 or 20 or 30 turrets or a massive electrical system without you actually knowing the exact details about it. And that's what makes this awesome. And that's what I hope to achieve with my explanation. So I hope you understand and I hope you like this very fundamental video. I say fundamental because this video will be the basis of a series that, that I'll be starting on my channel. On this series, I'll be showing you guys electrical systems that can be useful and can be extremely overpowered using in your base. This goes as far as having some kind of turret system, how that all works, or kind of basic in that way. Also lamps and SAM sites, an alarm system. I'm going to be showing you guys everything. And there's a lot of things that I want to share with you guys. A lot of cool features and systems that you can make that can really really make the difference in your base being rated even when you're offline and there's a lot of things that i haven't seen on youtube yet there's a lot of things i know that i want to share with you guys and i can't wait to do so but first let's get to the basics make sure you have watched this video because again it will be the fundament of everything else i hope this video wasn't too much for you you're probably gonna want to re-watch it and I would really recommend so because there's going to be so much awesome things showcased on my channel that you guys can use. Anyways, that is it. That is it for this one. If you liked the video, if you like this type of content, please make sure to let me know. Let me know also in the comments if you have any questions or feel free to join my Discord server and to just send me a PM. I'll try to answer as many questions from you all as I can. I hope you're all taking care of yourselves and your loved ones in these times. And I hope you're all doing fine. Take care and I'll see you all in the next one.